Okay, I've moved the power supplies back into the lab. They come with everything that you need to get started uh, with a high quality, high current power cord. It comes with a quick start manual, a CD with all the documentation, a detailed manual, and all the software you need, uh, various drivers for Agile and for LabVIEW. It also comes with, of course, a calibration certificate from when it was calibrated at the factory. And it also has various fuses included, depending on where you live in the world, you can put the proper fuse in there. So I've already connected both of these guys to the power, and I have connected them through the Ethernet port to a router so that I can connect them, wire connect to them wirelessly through Wi-Fi, uh, which I can demonstrate later on. So now I've also turned on the hard power switch at the back, so the power supplies are in standby mode. You can tell that uh, that the soft switch in the front uh, glows on and off uh, slowly. So if I turn this overhead light off, you may be able to better see it. You can see that they turn on and off, letting you know that they're in standby mode. So I'm going to turn them on at the same time. There we go. They go through a quick self-test and they power on. The uh, 1116A powers on a little bit faster than the 1308A, uh, but not much of a difference. So you can see that the LCDs come on. The LCDs are very bright in person. There's a lot of uh, light in my room and I have no problem reading them. So I'm going to show you the interfaces of the uh, DP1116A first, and then I'll show you whatever that's different on the 13OA. The firmwares are quite similar, and so then there should be most of the functionality is the same. So I'm going to start from the one on the right. So let me focus on that one. Here we go. Here we go. So now we can see it better. So right away you can see, of course, the big color LCD screen, and there's a lot of information displayed on it. So, of course, it tells you off, that means that the power is turned off, that the output is not enabled, which makes sense because you don't want the power supply to start on with the outputs enabled. It's set on the 32 volt 5 amp mode. It shows you the voltage, the ampere, and the wattage. They're all grayed out because the output is disabled. At the bottom, you have volts, currents, OVP, which is over voltage protection, OCP, which is over current protection. It also tells you what the output is currently set to if you were to enable the output. So it's set to 0 volts right now and a maximum of 5 amps. So if you turn it on right now, there will be nothing at the output. And the over voltage protection is disabled and it's set to 35.2 and the overcurrent protection is also disabled, set to 11 amps. There's also a little speaker symbol at the top here letting you know that the, uh, the tone for the keys is active. And there's also the LXI symbol, meaning that this is connected to some sort of a USB or Ethernet interface. And I said before, it is connected to a router. So that tells you that there's the, one, of the, one, of the, one of its interfaces is active. So let's try this. For example, I can go to this 16 volt 10 amp mode. Everything stays the same, but the background color changes and the 16 volt 10 amp symbol appears here. So you can see if it's red, meaning that you can go all the way to 32 volts. And if it's blue, it can only go up to 16 volts. So it gives you an idea. Um, so that without having to look at the numbers, if you're looking at it from the corner of your eye, you can tell from the color code. So let's, uh, let's uh, put it back to 30 volts 5 amp, and let's uh, try entering some number. For example, I want to set the output to 5 volts. I say 5, I can either press this volts or the this volts here. As I was mentioning before, it's very convenient to have this volts amps right next to the keypad because you don't have to travel so far to push it. So I say 5, and I press volts. Now it says here that the output will be set to 5 volts if I were to enable the output. I can do that by pressing this, and then this guy turns to on, and the numbers all become bright white colors, so they are very easy to read. Now you can see it says 4.999. That's the internal sampling of the voltage that it believes is appearing at the interface of the output. So it's very, very close to 5, obviously. Um, I can, uh, for example, enable over voltage protection. Let's say I want to do it at uh, 10 volts. I, I will select this and I will enter 10 volts. So now it says 10 volts for over voltage protection. I press it again and now it's enabled. I can uh, turn the over current protection on as well. Quite easy, let's say 8 amps. I will play 8 amps, I will press it again and it will be enabled. So very easy to do. All the information you need is right there on the display in front of you. So uh, let's look at some of the other buttons. Um, I can push this guy, which is kind of neat. It's just a little something they've programmed that shows you the little dials. So you can see uh, the dial for the voltage, the dial for the amp, and the dial for the wattage. So some people who like the analog display can look at that. Of course, the values are still shown digitally here on the side. So they've, they've used this LCD quite well and packed it with information no matter what setting it is in. So let's go back to the regular. 
setting. So the output is now at uh, 5 volts. Let's look at some of the other capabilities it has. Well, let me press the wave display. Uh, if I press that, I will get a uh, voltage, amp, and wattage versus time graph that is updated but appears to be about once a second. So if you're testing something and uh, you would like to monitor how the current uh, changed with time or how, the, how much power consumption changed with time, you can press that and it will plot it for you. Or one, one thing I found that could be quite useful is that let's say you've been running it and you detect a fault uh, in your system that caused the current spike. Even if you were not in this display, you can still click this and it's been sampling in the background even when it's not active. So you come back and you click that and you can see immediately if there was a spike somewhere and you can find out. So very, very, it's a very useful fact that this is always running in the background. So let me disable that so you can go back. Uh, there is the, of course, the timer function, which is a built-in table where you can enter the desired voltage and current versus time. And that way you can, the, the power supply can cycle through the, the voltages you want indefinitely, or it can loop, or it can uh, do a ramp, or a down ramp, a high ramp, anything you want. Uh, the timing is fixed currently, as far as I understand. It's uh, the same as the sampling. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, this is huge, useful for when you're doing industrial testing or you're doing stress testing. Let's say you want to find out if your circuit would fail uh, if the power supply changes by plus or minus 10% and you want to repeat that test a thousand times. No problem, you just enter it in there, let it run, no need to connect it to a computer, no need to connect it to anything, it will automatically do that for you. So the fact that it has all this software written in it is, is a big benefit when you don't want to have to sit and do a whole bunch of programming or, or set it up a computer for it. It can be a standalone stress testing instrument, a huge advantage uh, for sure. Uh, there's also, of course, uh, the sense button, which I will demonstrate so by pressing the sense button, uh, the sense port is activated. So let me go back to the regular mode. Yeah, so I press the sense button. You can see the little sense symbol lights up, meaning that uh, the sense ports are active. So I can disable the sense port. Uh, it has the utility button, of course, which uh, then in the inside the utility you get soft menus. You can click the uh, I.O. button and you have LAN, USB, and GPIB. I have already configured the LAN, you can see right there. Uh, you can configure the USB, there's a USB address for it, so you can talk to it using uh, the drivers. There's of course the GPIB address 25, and there's a whole bunch of other, uh, other settings. Uh, you can go into the uh, configuration, change the language, you can change uh, what the power on status is, so that means that when I power it on, uh, where, what state is going to be at the last state or it's going to go back to the default. You can change the brightness. It also has over temperature protection built into it. So on top of over current protection and over voltage protection, there's also OTP. And it has a two-stage OTP, meaning that you can tell it, well, I can press the OTP button, I can enable the OTP button. So that means that if the temperature exceeds a certain value inside the instrument, it will automatically turn the output off to prevent any damage uh, to your circuit or to uh, the power supply. It has a two-stage one, where the, the, and the second stage of the OTP is internal to without your control. It will, of course, shut down if the temperature exceeds a certain value. So very, very useful um, set of uh, configuration. Uh, it all, it all, you can also look at the... Uh, uh, you can turn the beeper on and off so it doesn't make any noise when you push the buttons. You can run a self-test and the system info. So if I click on system info, you can see that the hardware version is 1.0. This is one of the <laughs> first ones that have come up the uh, manufacturing. The logic version is also 1.0 and the software version is 1.01.02. So there have been some firmware upgrades on this and we'll talk about that as well. So let's look at what else we have. We also have a store and recall. So you can store all the setting that you want inside the power supply. Uh, for example, your OVP, OTP, OCP, and the voltage and the current, or a table of values, and you can save that to a file, and you can have multiple files for different projects or different products that you're testing. You just plug it in right there, or you can either plug it into the here, or you can save it on the internal memory, and you can load them and you'll be ready to go so you don't have to enter all the information. So it quite, quite, can be quite beneficial. There's also the help button. So if you don't have the manual with you and uh, you want to know what a certain button does, let's say I want to know what this volt button does, I, will, I, press, the, I press the help. Let me exit this. I press the help. 
Then I press the volts and it will tell you what that is. So that it says that press this key and set the limiting voltage by using the directional key, linear or numeric key directly. So you can see very easily how um, if any button you're not sure of, it will tell you how the functionality of that button is. So a full built-in help can be very useful if you don't have the manual lying around. So uh, I think I've talked about most of the things, so let's move on to uh, the other power supply, just to emphasize some of the differences. There we go. So everything is, the layout is of course the same, with the, with the difference that because this guy has triple output, as soon as you turn it on, you get three individual cards that tell you the setting for the 6 volt, the plus 25 volt, and the minus 25 volt output. So it is by default, they're all, of course, outputs are all turned off, and they're all set to zero volts. Now, if you want to select a particular channel, all you need to do is to press the button for it. So they're color-coded here, and the color coding matches the, the color on the LCD. So I press the 6-volt one, then the 6-volt one is highlighted. Let's say I want to set 3 volts, no problem, 3 volts. Now it's set to 3 volts. I can select the 25-volt one. Let's say I want to set that to 10 volts, no problem. And I want to set the minus 25 volts, let's say, to 20 volts. There it is. So now it says here that this is set to 3 volts, this is set to 10 volts, and this is set to 20 volts. Now if I want to look at a particular channel and, and make it larger because that's the one that I'm working with, I can say, let's say I want to look at the 6 volt one, I will press this little button and it would focus that particular display bigger. So now I can see all the numbers much larger. It still shows on the right side the setting for the other two channels, so that's nice. Uh, let me go back to the regular mode. I can turn each of the channels on individually. So channel, um, the six volt channel is turned on. Remember I was saying that it was set to three volts. It is set to three volts. Channel two I can turn on. It's set to 10 volts, it shows 10 volts. And the, finally, the last channel was set to minus 20 volts, you can see. There is some um, offset current being displayed even though nothing is connected. That's, that's still within the spec of the power supply, but can be calibrated out if you need to. Right now the power supplies haven't warmed up yet. I just turned them on, so there will be some offset, and once they warm up, that should go away. And even if it doesn't, there is a way to calibrate them out, and I'll show you in just a second. So, I can also turn, turn all of the outputs on and off at the same time. That can be very useful if you have a system that uses all of these power supplies and you want to give power to all the power supplies at the same time and turn them off at the same time. It takes time to push each of the buttons. Some systems can have power, power supply conflict voltages if the, all the power supplies are not raised simultaneously. So you can turn them all off at the same time and all on at the same time. And as soon as you press the all on button, it asks you, are you sure you want to turn all the channels on or not? Just a safety precaution, you can say okay, and they all turn on at the same time. So I, I was talking about the calibration. If you go under utility, there is a button called calibrate. If you press that, it asks you for a password. The calibration files are password protected, but if you contact Regal, they will give you the password and they will help you calibrate this either yourself or of course you can send it back to the factory and they will do a full calibration. So I'm not going to mess with the calibration right now, but it is important to know that that function is available for you. So we can get rid of that. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just test out uh, the accuracy of the voltages that they can produce when they're un under load and when they are, there's no load. Then I'm going to do look at the rise time, the fall time, look at the, the sense port, and a whole bunch of other functionality so we can get an idea of how well these things perform. So I'm going to set that up, then I'm going to uh, continue from there.